we now turn our attention to projective torque varieties. We'll begin by reviewing complex projective end space and complex projective varieties. Now, with complex projective end space, okay, denoted P upper N, this space parameterizes the lines for the origin C of the N plus one. As a quotient space, we start with C of the N plus one minus the origin, mod out by the following equivalence relation. So two points are equivalent if their scalar multiples as vectors, or these points are equivalent if they live on the same line through the origin in C of the N plus one. We'll denote quotient map by pi. So that's just gonna carry each of our points in C of the N plus one minus the origin to its class in PN. We'll denote that with hard brackets. Now, because we have equivalence classes, we can replace the notation by any other element in the class, which means we can multiply through or divide by non-zero scalars. So a useful trick Okay, say if we have x0 non-zero, we can divide through by x0, which forces a one in the first coordinate. Okay, we'll need that later. Now, for complex projective varieties, okay, we take the same approach that we did in the affine case. So there, we start with polynomial, take zero sets, and then start intersecting. Here, for things to be well-defined in projective space, okay, we have to start with homogeneous polynomial. So recall homogeneous polynomial, okay, what do we do? If we take, okay, our point, multiply by a scalar and then evaluate, we're allowed to pull the scalar out by some power. Okay, and so that's homogeneous. Now, this means, okay, if we have some point where our polynomial vanishes, then it's gonna vanish on any multiples and so it'll vanish on the class entirely in projective space. So this will be well defined when we pass to the quotient. So that's zero sets. Now, if we want complex projective varieties, then all we do is, okay, I'll take some finite subset of these homogeneous polynomials, okay, they can have different degrees, and then we're just gonna intersect the zero sets for each one. Likewise, from the affine case, we have this notion of Zariski topology, and then we could talk about open sets, Zariski closure, and so on. For examples, let's first consider P1. We could parameterize all points in P1 as follows. If the first entry is a zero, I could force the second entry to be a one. And if the first entry is non-zero, we force it to be a one, and then the second entry can be anything. So we're taking a complex plane, putting it together with a point to get a real two-sphere. For the Zariski topology, okay, we have for the closed subsets, okay, we have the null set, whole space, and then any finite subset of points. If I go up a dimension, say P2, okay, what are we gonna do here? Same idea, if I suppose the first two entries are zero, we force a one. First entries are zero, we force a one, and then we have free variable, and then if I force the first entry to be a one, we have free variables in the next two. So we're just taking a P1, adding in a C2. Okay, so we're adding on a two-dimensional complex cell. And that's gonna be the process in general, okay, going to P3, P4, and so on. Now, we should note that okay, Pn has structure of both complex manifold and a smooth manifold. Okay, so in these topologies, it's gonna to be compact and Hausdorff. Okay, note, definitely not Hausdorff in the Zariski topology. Now, if we wanna to move to torque varieties, okay, well, projective end space is gonna be our model for a complex projective torque variety. We need a dense torus and then torus action that's algebraic. Okay, so let's take a look at that so our torus inside of Pn, okay, what we'll do, I'm just gonna take all classes that have non-zero entries. Okay, so I just take A0 through An, okay, they'll all be non-zero. Since they're all non-zero, I could divide through by A0, so we leave with a one, and that's gonna show that this torus is just gonna be n-fold product of C stars. Not so hard to check, this is dense using the Zariski topology. For the group action on the whole projective space, okay, well, you just do what you would think. We're just gonna multiply entry-wise. 
Okay, so if we have t0 through tn going to x0 through xn, we just multiply t0 x0 through tn xn. Of course, we need to make sure this is well defined, meaning if I change either the t or the x by scalar multiplication, the same answer results, and that's straightforward. Finally, okay, well, you'll note if we have any entry equal to zero, this action is going to preserve the zeroness of that entry. So that's how we get the orbits under this action. Okay, not so important for what we need, but interesting to point out. Okay, and so the orbits are just going to be given by, you pick a handful of coordinates to zero out, that gives you an orbit itself. Before defining projective torque varieties, we need to have a concrete understanding of three things. Okay, the torques for projective space, its character lattice, and the lattice of one parameter subgroups. Now, for the torus, first let's understand it as quotient space. So same as projective space. Here we have C star at the end plus one. Okay, we're gonna mod out by C star. So, using an exact sequence, what are we doing? We have C star at the end plus one. Okay, that sits inside of C the end plus one, throw away the origin. We use the quotient map pi to send each point here to its class and projective space. So it goes inside the torus. So we're just taking our non-zero points, sending them to projective classes. Kernel of this map, okay, the identity for our torus is just a class of one, 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 one. So kernel here will just be multiples of one, 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 one as a vector. So that gives our description here. Next, for the character lattice, Okay, we could reverse the direction of our exact sequence here, but we could do this more concretely as follows. Now the lattice, okay, the character lattice for our torus, is going to be given by all n plus 1 tuples of integers that sum to 0. So to see this, okay, let's suppose I have a character. Okay, remember, our elements are projective equivalence classes. Now, to identify our torus with C star at the end, we just made the first entry a one. If I have C star at the end, we already know all the characters on that. You just take your entries, raise the integer powers. So the character is gonna be given by this product here. Now you'll note, if I pull out the T zero that we've divided by for this class, I could bring that out to the front. Its exponent is minus the sum of all the other exponents. And so this is going to correspond to a tuple where the first element's just minus some of all the other elements. And so that's how I get this identification here. Next, the lattice of one parameter subgroups. We'll identify this with, we'll take z to the n plus one, mod it out by all integral multiples of one, 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 one. Again, to see this, what I'll do is, Okay, first, I'm going to take a one parameter subgroup in the C star to the N. Okay, so to get that, we just take an N tuple of integers, as so. C star to the N, okay, we saw the previous board. To turn that into projective classes for a torus, we just put a one out in front, take the class. Now you'll note for this class, it's not going to change if I multiply by T, T squared, T cubed, okay, through all entries. So we know we're going to get the same exact one parameter subgroup if we change our Bs by adding a number to all at the same time. And so that's gonna mean we can mod out by all multiples of the one, 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 one. Now, we want description, the definition of projective torque variety. So recall the affine case. Here we're gonna go for the concrete description. Okay, what do we start with? We have torus, we have a character lattice, last one parameter subgroups, we pick finite, subset of the character lattice, and then I could define this phi sub a. Okay, and here I'm using the notation, okay, t written as point t1 through tn. We raise the powers, okay, these are tuple powers, and then we get an affine torque variety y sub a by taking the Zariski closure of the image of this map inside of c raised to the s. Now, we could take the image of phi sub a, pass to projective classes, and then take the Zariski closure in projective space. So that's what we'll take as our definition of x sub a, the analog of y sub a in the affine case. 
we note, if we went for a definition of projective torque variety using the group action, then each projective torque variety would be isomorphic to one of these X sub A's. Now, for examples, okay, we'll recycle our old examples. First, we take, okay, for matrix characters, A equal to D0, D minus one, one, all the way up through zero D. This is gonna give us a map. Okay, in the affine case, it goes from C2 to C D plus one. So, on the right-hand side, we pass to projective classes to get P to the D. Okay, so we just drop in our characters, take projective classes. But we know because things are homogeneous, it's well-defined if we pass two projective classes on the left-hand side. So it's gonna give us a map from P1 to P of the D. This is what we'll call the rational normal curve of degree D. Okay, before we had rational normal cone in the affine case. We note, okay, this is gonna embed P1 into P D. So the space is always the same. Okay, they're all isomorphic to P1, but the embeddings are different. Nope, the ideal for this projective variety, again, is gonna be generated by all of these two by two minors. We note they're homogeneous polynomials of degree two. Another example. Okay, we have for character matrix, I have A equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, minus 1. We take characters from the affine case, and then again, we can pass to projective classes on both sides. So here we're going to get the projective torque variety. Okay, it's going to be defined by the zero set of x, y minus z, w in projective three space.